Hey there everyone, it's Jenna. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be doing some heirloom pumpkin DIYs. And I personally love the look of heirloom pumpkins. I think they add such a beautiful, whimsical look to a space. They help to add a little punch of color, but still keep things feeling very earthy and natural at the same time. They have a beautiful texture, so they help to add to that earthy color palette that I have going on, which I love. So if I were to go out to the store right now and buy a big cluster of heirloom pumpkins, it would cost me at least $50. So I figured maybe I would take that money this year and try to invest in making some really beautiful DIYs that I can pack away and then reuse year after year that still look super realistic and give off that heirloom pumpkin look. So first we're going to do a really beautiful heirloom pumpkin succulent centerpiece and then I'm going to take regular craft store pumpkins and turn them into beautiful realistic looking heirloom pumpkins. So should be a really fun video and without further ado let's get into the DIYs. Okay, so for our faux pumpkin planter, I found this faux foam pumpkin at Lowe's and what I really liked about it was its shape and how it looked like a real heirloom pumpkin and it was the perfect size for a centerpiece. I didn't want this planter to be too small so that it would look awkwardly tiny on a big table. I wanted it to have good enough scale so that it could be an anchoring centerpiece and just kind of be a focal point. So when I brought it home, I removed the stem, I just kind of yanked it out of there and I started cutting a hole in the top of the planter and I'm not gonna lie, I thought this thing was going to be hollow in the center because that's how light it was and it turns out that it was a solid styrofoam pumpkin. So after cutting it open, I kind of had to alter my plan a bit. Okay, new plan. I think actually what I'm gonna do is go get a little plastic bowl that will fit in here and dig out that styrofoam so the bowl can kind of fit flush in here. And then I'm gonna drill holes in the bottom of the plastic bowl so that way I can remove it and water it and then it can drain and once it's dried, I can put it back in here. I'm gonna go to the store to see if I can find something that will fit in here. So I went to Target and found this little plastic bowl for 50 cents and this ended up being the perfect size because succulents typically don't love a big container they actually like to be more tightly packed so this little bowl solution will work really well I think and I just dug out the rest of the styrofoam with a spoon so that the bowl fit flush inside and then I drilled some rough holes in the bottom of the bowl because succulents really need well draining soil so I actually was super happy with how this turned out because this was basically a really practical mini planter that I can easily remove to water and drain so next it was time to update the coloring of this pumpkin a little bit it. and honestly our starting point wasn't awful but I just wanted to make it a little bit more neutral so that your eye would be drawn to the succulent arrangement as opposed to the bright orange streaks on the pumpkin. So I went with this super fitting heirloom white spray paint which ended up being the perfect creamy satin off-white color and once I got halfway into spraying I had this idea pop into my head. When I was looking at real heirloom pumpkins in the store for inspiration they all had nicks and scratches in them so I thought I would make my pumpkin look even more realistic by adding some little divots and scratches with some rocks that were laying around. And then I just spray painted over that. You do want to be careful not to puncture the coating when making these scratches, so just some light subtle distressing, but overall I was really happy with how this came out. I love the realistic satin finish of it, and again, when I was at the store, I noticed that the pumpkins weren't a solid cream color. They actually had some dirt marks and some darker splotches, so to make my faux pumpkin resemble that, I just took this matte acrylic paint in the shade linen, and then I added some to a plate with water to create a little faux dirt wash for my pumpkin. And so the goal here was just to apply the paint in areas where dirt would naturally gather. So in the cracks of the pumpkin, in the little distressed divot, so this gives off the look of a real dirt caked slightly distressed heirloom pumpkin and helps to add some dimension now I will say that I applied this heavily in the cracks and creases and I left the middle parts in between the creases uncovered because the sheen from the satin spray paint gave off that realistic waxy look and I didn't want to totally cover that all up with the matte faux dirt so I just made sure to use water to dilute the paint and then I concentrated it in the cracks of the pumpkin and honestly this made such such a big difference. I feel like this truly resembles a real heirloom pumpkin that's been hollowed out for a planter. So that's totally the look I was going for. And I did want to do 
something to kind of break up the border a bit since we do have this planter just awkwardly sitting in there I just wanted to make it have a little bit of a softer edge so when I was at home goods a couple weeks ago I spotted this really beautiful green moss it was only $9.99 for this entire bag so I ended up grabbing it for future DIYs and I figured this would be the perfect time to use it the moss just helps to add a beautiful natural texture and it'll help the succulent arrangement feel more wild and whimsical so I just used hot glue to apply the moss and they do have similar moss at craft stores and I will link some below as well as all of the products used in this video so that will all be down below in the description box but I love how this little moss ring turned out it's the perfect little organic natural nest for our succulent bowl so I just added the little planter back in there and then I filled it with some cactus and succulent potting mix and next it was time to head to the store to pick out our succulents which is one of the most fun parts in my opinion so here I'm at Lowe's and I honestly felt a little bit overwhelmed by all the choices I definitely wanted to have some color contrast between my succulents but at the same time I didn't want it to look too colorful and mismatched so when I was at the clearance rack at Lowe's I spotted this pre-made succulent arrangement for only $13 and you can also get pre-made succulent arrangements at Trader Joe's as well I loved the ones with these little orange flowers on them for fall I thought that was super cute but some of my favorites were the ones that had a tiny sliver of green in the center and then transitioned into that beautiful purple color I wanted to pick a couple of purple succulents because purple and green are opposite each other on the color wheel and I thought it would stand out really nicely against our green moss so I got some of those in my clearance arrangement and then I picked up some regular green and blue green succulents to accent them I also made sure to get a variety of sizes and I used this one larger succulent as my main focal piece and then I arranged smaller and medium sized ones around it so I just used a mix of purple green and blue green succulents in this arrangement and something to note is that you do want to wait a couple of days maybe even a week or two before you water your arrangement normally after planting something you would want to water it but not with succulents I've found that less water is almost always better and I usually don't even water them until they look like they need it because with succulents specifically underwatering is always better than overwatering so then I showed you all how in my fall decorate with me I used this piece of cheesecloth from Hobby Lobby to add a layer of soft texture to my table and then I placed our pumpkin succulent centerpiece on top and I loved how this turned out it's such a beautiful way to add a touch of realistic greenery to a space and it's a great conversation piece for something like a friendsgiving or if you're hosting thanksgiving and these would also be stunning if you're having a fall wedding and they can also be styled around the house somewhere like a coffee table dining table kitchen island just anywhere with a little bit of sunlight and i love the high-end designer look that it gives to my space Okay, so next it's time to make our faux heirloom pumpkins. And after looking at the store, I decided to make three different colors. So I liked these green ones as well as the peach ones. And I also wanted to try to make some natural cream ones as well, just because I thought the color combo would look really good together. And I already had the supplies from making the succulent arrangement. So first it was time to pick out the craft pumpkins. And I went to Hobby Lobby because they had the biggest selection. And I made sure to pick out pumpkins that were that heirloom pumpkin pumpkin shape kind of flat and organic versus something like this that was more tall and very uniform it didn't have a lot of variation in the creases and I wanted to pick things that had more of that fairy tale organic look to them so these were all on sale for 40% off and I decided to get a variation of sizes with two small ones two medium and two large so this pumpkin was kind of my inspiration for the peach colored ones that I wanted to make. I like how the color slowly faded from like a pale peachy pink to a subtle mint green. So the first step in getting this look was again, roughing up the pumpkins a little bit. And because I bought different pumpkins at the store, some were a little bit more durable at this part than others. Like this foam one was great because I was able to distress it a ton without breaking the plastic coating. Whereas a lot of the other ones I had to be more careful Careful with this because they would easily rip and then that wouldn't look realistic at all you just want to have some subtle divots and distressed marks so in order to make this pumpkin super lifelike I wanted to remove the stem and you definitely don't have to do this you can just tape off the stem and paint around it but I wanted to see what it would look like to remove the stem and replace it with a way more realistic one and it was a little difficult to remove you want to make sure you don't rip apart the pumpkin at this part so definitely remove it carefully if you do choose to take the stem off and then for paint 
night, I found this stunning peachy color that looked almost identical to the pumpkin that I saw in the store. So I just painted that on with a paintbrush and I did have to do two coats of this, but I was really happy with the color and how closely it resembled our inspiration pumpkin. And then for each color pumpkin, I decided to do two of each, but I wanted to make sure that when this was all completed, that it looked really organic and natural. So I didn't want to do two of the same color in the same size. I wanted to vary up the sizes so it would give off more of a naturally gathered feel. So I did a large and a medium in this peach color. And once both coats of that were dry, it was time to go in with our green. And I picked out this basil green color for our base and I kind of wanted it to appear natural and faded. So I added some water to it to make it a little paint wash. So that way I could apply a large thin coat of the paint wash and then go back into the center of that and darken it a bit so it looked like it would be naturally fading and just like natural color variations as opposed to like a bright solid green splotch right in the middle of the pumpkin. I just wanted it to look very natural and faded. So I just kind of built that up. I would do light coats and then go in and add a little bit more paint and just kind of make it a natural varied green. And then I also layered in this Italian sage green with it just so it had some more dimension and color variation. And then because the paints that I used were matte, I wanted to get that semi shiny kind of waxy pumpkin finish. So I painted on this clear wax and I will say that this stuff was a little sticky after I put it on. You are supposed to buff it and wipe it off with a lint free cloth. So I just used what I had and I wiped off the excess with a paper towel, but this might not be a good solution if you're using these outside or in a high traffic area and constantly touching them. But I was just experimenting with different finishes. So I'll share some other sealant options in my next set of pumpkins. But when I was at the store, I saw these stunning real pumpkins with these super whimsical stems and they were only four bucks each. So I decided to actually use the stems from these real pumpkins on my fake ones, just to trick your eye into thinking that they're real. And like I said, you don't have to do this part, but I just thought it would take it to the next level. So these guys, I just actually ripped them right off, which was super nice. And then I just put them out in the sun to dry for a couple hours and attached them to my pumpkins with some hot glue and I was really happy with how these turned out I feel like the stems give them so much personality and I just love the heirloom peach color with that subtle green variation so for our next set of pumpkins I wanted to make them green kind of similar to this one maybe with a little bit less distressing so for the base coat I used this Italian sage color again which was super close to the ones that I saw in the store and I gave both pumpkins two coats of that but after I applied it it was looking a little flat and just lacked dimension. So I just took this lighter yellow cream color called Hazy Moon and mixed it in with that Italian sage. So this just made it a little bit lighter. And again, I added some water in with it just to give it more of like a paint wash finish versus like a solid globby paint. This makes it a little bit more transparent and it's easier to layer and build up. So basically the goal with this was just to give it some dimension and texture. And as you can tell from this video, a damp paper towel is my paintbrush of choice. I just think it does a great job at creating that natural texture and does a great job at blending things out. So I just applied a blotted coat of the lighter paint wash to add that dimension in there. And then this time to seal it, I used a light coat of satin sealer. I felt like this was a lot easier and much more durable than the wax. So I would definitely recommend this method over the wax. And then I just attached my real stems again with that hot glue. And I love how these green ones came out. 
out. They were super simple to do and I just love that natural earthy color that they have. And then to give off that neutral look from my last set of pumpkins, I wanted to create these cream colored ones. So I pretty much did the exact same process that I did for the succulent bowl pumpkin just because I had those materials on hand. And I just sprayed them with that satin heirloom white spray paint and then added some dimension to the creases with that linen paint wash. And I will say that out of all of the methods I used, this one was by far the easiest and most foolproof if you're a DIY beginner. I would say the key here is just to make sure that you blend out the paint well with that damp paper towel and only get it in the cracks of the pumpkin and just leave some of the spray paint exposed. But other than that, it's super simple and you could even make a bunch of white ones and it would give off such a designer look. Now, as far as styling the pumpkins, I used my trusty cheesecloth to give my table that texture and movement that I was hoping for, but you could also just use a piece of scrap fabric or a table runner that you already have. And then I layered four of these super affordable seeded garlands down for some more of that organic natural texture. But you could also use branches from your backyard and just lay them flat. You could also use dried florals or any other fall garland that you have on hand. And then I just laid out all the pumpkins making sure to alternate the colors and sizes and I used the bigger ones in the center of the arrangement just to help anchor it and then I used the smaller ones closer to the ends and I love how these turned out I was really happy with the color combination and how they all looked together and I think that the real stems really did take them to the next level and yes I did buy six real stems but I'm planning to use the white pumpkins that I bought them on for a pumpkin painting party so we will get some good use out of them and I just love how these all looked together and even tied in some of the colors from our art piece and they're fun and colorful but they still feel subtle and natural at the same time and these would also be stunning styled on a console table fireplace or even stacked in levels on a patio definitely a super fun DIY that will really help to elevate the look of your space this autumn season all right everyone that about wraps up this video I hope you guys enjoyed this heirloom pumpkin DIY if you did please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up because it really does help to support the channel and be sure that you're subscribed so that you don't miss any future videos. And definitely leave me a comment below letting me know if you wanna see holiday DIY videos, if you're more into the holiday shop with me's or the holiday decorate with me's. Leave me a comment below letting me know what you guys like the best because I'm getting to the point where I'm planning my holiday decor stuff. So let me know. I'll probably do a poll over in my community page too, but I always like to do a DIY or two, but let me know what you guys wanna see. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I wanna thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in my next one. Bye!